Are you ready, Monarch fans? It's time for the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Rader and Coach Bobby Wilder. Sponsored by a Step in Time Chimney. Given a week to rest up, the Old Dominion football team is on the road again as the Monarchs head south to take on Middle Tennessee State. These final two games will be all about winning out and ending the season on a high note. So what can we expect on Saturday? Let's find out. The Old Dominion football show starts now. Hi, Bruce Rader, along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Coach, bye weeks are good for a couple of reasons. It gives you time to heal up, and it gives you time to get a jump mm -hmm. on your opponent. Uh, injuries have played a big part in your season. Right. How healthy are you now? Much healthier. And to your point, Bruce, the bye week chance to get healthy, which, which we did. We're healthier. We'll get Jeremy Miser back, our outstanding defensive tackle. Also, Blake Watson, who's leading the league in kickoff returns and, and a solid running back. He's back. It also gave Hayden Wolf, the freshman quarterback, an opportunity to work on his own with the receivers. Those guys were out last week throwing and catching, so it helped us in a number of ways. And your last point, an extra, some extra time to prep for Middle Tennessee, which we needed. Now, we know that conference games, all of them are always tough, and it's mm. senior day mm. at Middle Tennessee, and you know how the emotions flow during mm. these senior days. The Blue mm. Raiders are going to give you everything they can. Yeah, they'll, and they'll be tough at home, Bruce. They, they're the only team in the conference to beat Marshall this year, which they beat them earlier in the year in Murfreesboro, 24-13. to 13. And then three weeks ago, they beat FIU at home by 33 points. So they're a tough out at home, a team we have not beaten, and that's a goal. This is one of the only teams in the league that we have not beaten is to beat them this week. Well, freshman quarterback Hayden Wolf, as you mentioned, has been the talk of the conference the mm. past few weeks. He seems to have a lot of self-confidence. Do he you does, see it yeah. growing? I do, yeah. Coming off the, this performance against San Antonio where he was 17 for 29, 247 yards, the 58-yard touchdown pass to Aaron Moore. And in only his second game, Bruce, he has really sparked our offense. That was a season high, 371 yards. We threw for 290 uh, with a double pass from Stevie Williams also for a touchdown. So he's gaining confidence and having two weeks to prepare from Middle Tennessee has really helped him. Now, you had mentioned last week that you had given the players last week mm -hmm. off, but you're mm -hmm. telling me now that Hayden said, hey, coach, mm -hmm. I don't want the time off. I want yeah. to go out and work on my own. Mm -hmm. And apparently his wide receiver said, mm -hmm. hey, man, we're all in. Yeah, he grabbed the wide receivers, the tight ends, and this was the first Monday that they had off because he wanted to continue to work on the timing with those players and credit those players. They, they want to work with him. They know it's a true freshman quarterback uh, who's only played two games and they're all working together. And that, the timing has gotten much better in our pass game over the course of these two weeks, Bruce. Now, injuries really hurt you at the wide receiver position. Mm. Do you see your wide receivers growing mm. as well mm. as your quarterback has? I do, yeah. And that's that's something when you when you get a quarterback who's throwing the ball as well as Hayden is, that, that inspires the group. We certainly miss Eric Kuma. You know, I made the decision to redshirt him after the Florida Atlanta game when he had 10 catches for 99 yards, a season high out of a wide receiver. But I know having him back next year, he'll be the best wide receiver in the league. But it certainly helped those other younger wide receivers, Aaron Moore, Darius Savage, um, Cornell Hendrick. And then you look at Stevie Williams, who converted from quarterback to wide receiver. They're growing, Bruce, with Hayden Wolf. Now, what about the run game? Any chance mm -hmm. that that could take some of the pressure off of Hayden this week? It, it definitely can, and having Isaac Weaver back at center uh, will help us. Blake Watson coming back at running back, I really feel like that will help us. And this is a Middle Tennessee team that's been giving up a couple hundred yards a game in the run game, so it's certainly an emphasis for us this week, Bruce, to improve in the run game like we have the last two weeks in the pass game. How much losing your top two running backs hurt you this season? Uh, it's definitely been a factor, and um, Lala Davis just has not been healthy all this year, and that, that's been part of it. Now, he's practiced better this week. He looks better. He's finally out of the red jersey in practice, which means he's, he's getting contacted. So we felt him more in this past game against San Antonio. I'm hoping this is a breakout week for him. You're coming off that heartbreaking loss to Texas San Antonio two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Did the bye week give your players an opportunity to clear their mm -hmm. heads and uh, focus on Middle Tennessee? Yeah, they, I mean, they were devastated with the loss, leading 23-10 to 10 going into the, the fourth quarter. But they realize 
we're improving as a team on offense. That's been what's held us back all this year. We've played good defense, Bruce. We're top four in the league defensively, and it really has inspired our defense seeing the offense be more productive on the field, and, and they want to end this streak, Bruce. They badly want to get a win this week. And your special teams were on spot two weeks mm. ago. Nick Rice hit, uh, what, three field goals mm -hmm. in a row? Uh, that has to give uh, your kicker a lot of confidence. It does, and it gives our team a lot of confidence, Bruce. And, and we knew in that, that last drive that if we'd just gotten the ball in field goal range, he was going to make it. He's making his field goals at an 82% clip right now, which is as good as anybody in the nation. He's performing like an all-conference player. And that's what you need. Defensively, as you mentioned, uh, they can put together four mm -hmm. quarters if they can. There's a lot of talent there. Mm. There is, and, and Calvin Bruton's a guy that uh, had 12 tackles in this game, Bruce, from the safety position. Now, we've brought him in the box a lot. He's almost like a hybrid linebacker, and, and he led the team with tackles. Lawrence Garner had his 11, which he always does, leading the league in tackles. But Kelvin Bruton's a player that's really come on for us. The transfer from Florida State, unfortunately, we only have him for one year, but he's been a very good player for us on defense. And he knows how to play big-time football, yes, and that's got to help even throughout the locker room. It does, yeah. It helps with all the guys, and he's such a professional in how he goes about his preparation. All right. When we come back, a special one-minute drill with one of the team captains. Senior Derek Wilder. That's next on the Old Dominion Football Show. Welcome back to the Old Dominion Football Show and welcome to the practice field here at Old Dominion. We are joined by the coach's son, Derek Wilder, defensive end for the Monarchs. And Derek, I know you've gotten the question so many times, but what is it like to be the coach's son? Uh, you know, you just get a lot more pressure than any other player would. It's on a regular basis. Everybody always looks to you to see what you know you should be doing and set the example. What is, in a football context, the worst thing about being the coach's son? Every rep, you know, is watched by your coach and then by the head coach. And then if I'm at home, you know, playing Xbox or watching TV, it's like, why aren't you watching film? Football or otherwise, what's the best Bobby Wilder story you can tell me? That's a good question. Do you need help yeah. with the answers? Yeah. I'm here for you. I've been here your whole what's life. What's your there. best football story? Playing-wise, it would definitely be uh, beating Delaware and knocking them out of the playoffs my right shirt freshman year. But I'll, I'll let you finish the interview. <laughs> You're doing Thanks, great. Dad. Uh, yeah, yeah, good to see you. <laughs> I'd say probably the you know the Virginia Tech game last year. You know, just celebrating on the field with them. That was a great moment, and I was glad to experience it. What was it like the day that your dad offered you a scholarship to play for him at Old Dominion? Uh, at first, I thought he was kidding, you know, you know, but sophomore year, junior year of high school, and we were sitting at dinner, it was like the middle of the week, and he, you know, said that they were offering me a scholarship, and at first I thought he was joking, and he was like, no, we're being serious, we want you to come play linebacker for us. So, I mean, it was a pretty special moment. He's Derek Wilder, the coach's son, here joining us for the Old Dominion Football Show, and Derek, why don't you say goodbye to the Monarch Nation? Bye, Monarch Nation. Coach, it had to be a dream come true coaching your son. Oh, it was. It's been, it's been great, Bruce, and especially this year where he's having the success that I always knew he could have. He's had a sack in each of the last three games. He had a strip sack at Florida International, and, and he's feeling it now. The move from linebacker to defensive end has been a great move for him. That's because you feed him well. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to be right back as the Old Dominion Football Show continues. Welcome back, Bruce Rader, along with Coach Bobby Wilder. Coach, I know you are focused on Saturday's game at Middle Tennessee, but mm -hmm. in two weeks, the final home game yeah. at Charlotte, it's senior day, and mm -hmm. I know your players would love to see mm -hmm. some great fan support. Yeah, and we, and we had really good fan support, Bruce, for the San Antonio game. They were loud. They were into it. Our players really appreciated that, and they badly want to win, Bruce. The, the one thing that I, I love about our players is they take a lot of pride in representing the 11 letters across their chest that say Old Dominion. They feel bad about the record, but playing at home is special for those kids, and especially for the 12 seniors we will walk out there next Saturday. And that last game when they're out there to mm. just to show their appreciation, the fans really need to come together. Yeah, and it, it means a lot to the players because all those seniors, Bruce, will have their families there, the ceremony before the game. It's such an emotional day for those kids. All right, let's get a little more specific about Saturday. Mm -hmm. Your keys to the game to mm -hmm. beating Middle Tennessee State. Oh, the, the biggest one is Asher O'Hara, their quarterback. He accounts for 300 of their 400 yards 
per game, Bruce. He, he throws the ball for 210 yards. He rushes for almost 90 a game. He has 126 carries this year, Bruce, which is combined the total of the four running backs who play for him. So he's got the ball in the hands. He's the key. And then defensively, they're a blitz team. They'll come after you. So our ability to not only handle but hurt the blitz, those are the two biggest keys to winning Saturday. All right, it's Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. What are your travel plans to get down there and prepare for the game? Well, we'll leave by, by charter Friday afternoon. We get down there Friday night for dinner, do our meetings at the hotel, Saturday morning walk through, uh, arrive at the hotel two hours before the game, get the victory, get back on campus by 1 a.m. Sunday morning. So no side trips up to Nashville. <laughs> no side trip to Nashville, unfortunately. This is all about focusing <laughs> on the last trip. two games business and trip. all about winning. Okay, yes, Coach, we're behind you on this one. This Appreciate would be it. great to finish yes, the would. season mm -hmm. with two wins. Old Dominion against Middle Tennessee. It's a 4 o'clock game at Red Floyd Stadium down in Murfreesboro. Good luck, Coach. Thank we'll you, see you back here next Wednesday night Look for the Old Dominion it. Football Show. Good night, everybody. Have a great night.